Welcome back to Frank Show, everybody. Right, tonight we will be talking about the KTM 990, work that we've done over the last few months on the bike. Some of the things you might have seen, some of the things you might have missed. Um, we'll compile these in one video and uh, have a look at it there. We'll cover the services, the oil pressure sensor switch, we'll cover fuel pump replacement, fuel filter replacement, side stand, bypass switch. There were actually quite a few. So let's do a segment and um, you can follow at the, the bottom of your screen in your video bar. It'll show you sections where you can skip to things that you have seen before. Um, don't watch them again. Carry on to the next one. But enjoy it and uh, watch out for the next video. We will be doing a lot of work on the Guzzi. It needs to finish. Until later, everybody. Cheers. Right. Frank the tank has been sorted out. We've done the oil pressure switch. We've done the fuel filter kit. Rode it now for about two days. Loving it. Um, it's completely sorted again, so we'll most probably take a, a route at some stage again. Today's video, what I want to talk about is Tune ECU software and the hardware that goes with it from Lone Lake. Guys, uh, the video I'll show you how we set up. We do fault code clearing on the bike. We actually connect directly with the ECU, do fault code clearing. We test injectors, O2 sensors and a bunch of, a bunch of other stuff. This is not a Game Boy quickly log in and be let loose on the bike and do a few changes you can screw it up really take caution if you have one of these kits and you know how it works um, good you know what i'm talking about you'll appreciate it uh, when working on maps on motorcycles especially on the ktms just like any other motorcycle like your 1200 super Tenaires, uh things need to be done according to steps you can greatly enhance your bike and you can really screw it up as well. If you do maps, and the one thing that I've learned with uh, the maps, I did a bit of research and had a look at maps available for these motorcycles. And the name that continuously comes up is Zuba. Zuba is with the Adventure Riders Forum and he's been writing and adapting maps for the last 10, 12 years at least. So when people talk about maps, he would be the go-to guy. And if he leaves a comment, people listen. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. So I appreciate that. The Tune ECU software ties in with the Lone Lake hardware component. Tune ECU software has been written by Alan Fontaine. And as far as I can see, <clears throat> it goes back to about 2009 up to 2022. You had it in a laptop version. You had it now in Android version. You could use tablets, cell phones, it doesn't matter. But the Android version on your cell phone has a little bit less functionality than your old laptop. The laptop version has been discontinued. There's no more support on it, unfortunately. But you can delve very deep into your map tables. <clears throat> you can make changes, you can have a look. Especially on your Triumphs, your older, uh, not older Triumphs, well, maybe older Triumphs, um, the 900s and so. You can literally download your map, open your map on Tunis, look at your tables, and then actually rectify some of the uh, emissions that have been coded in by the manufacturer. And just give you that little bit of a bump at the bottom. One of the Zuba maps for the 990 bumps it up to 118 horsepower obviously you have to have um, acropovic pipe system at the back there are certain things and on this in this case it wasn't a rottweiler conversion that he had he had actually the standard air box with standard air filter or cane in but guys you'll I'll, I'll, I'll talk you a bit through the video we'll show you a few things and how we um, Reset the, the throttle position sensor. It's a small, small little hole that we drilled into the side of the airbox. You can do things on these bikes. It's just you need to take a bit of caution. But they are so rewarding. 
and if you haven't ridden a 950 or 990 yet guys you miss out really this is actually this is actually a bad bike it's a terrible bike because when you ride one of these it does everything well um, it doesn't really mind me on the seat I don't have too much of a problem this is actually a big scrambler that's capable of doing over 200 kilometers per hour easily but it does everything so good that most other bikes tend to get lost and you are not really satisfied riding them but you have to have ridden or owned a 950 or a 990 to understand it for me the 1190 is more geared towards the GS uh, it's a GS market uh, the 1090 is lost in the middle somewhere. It's got a bit of an identity crisis. I'm not sure he's not a 1190, he's not a 990. What is he? But I've never ridden a 1090 before. That's just the normal perception that I get. So I don't judge on that. <coughs> but 950, 990, awesome bike for me. I doubt, I always keep the Africa Twin, but uh, I will most probably just buy another motor for this thing and if it does pack up or whatever the case may be, well, I'll just buy another 990. How's that? Yeah, I think that sounds like an idea. But anyway, I'm talking too much. Um, have a look at the video and check out the Tune uh, ECU software. I'll put the links at the bottom. I'll put the links in the description. If you are planning on buying this, ask away any question that you have. We'll, I'll send you to the Adventure Riders Forum. Have a look at their reviews. <clears throat> These guys do know what they're talking about. And get yourself a set of uh, Tune ECU software and learn the hardware component and start doing a bit of work on your own bike. But I hope you'll be doing a way lot more riding in 2022 than in 2021. I'll definitely be looking at that. Cool. Until our next video, we'll see what comes up. I'll be doing a uh, a 950 and 990 history segment. Watch out for that one. You guys enjoy it. Until later, cheers everybody. Right everybody, it's time we start reassembling the intake system. We'll do the throttle bodies. I have changed the oil switch. Very important, one of the first things if you ever get to a point where you disassemble the intake system, the very, very, very first thing that you do, take rags, plug the intake holes, don't forget about it. If something falls in here, it's a, uh, it's a mission to get it out. So guys, please, rags immediately. Whatever you do, take the airbox off rags in carry on with your work okay um, I'll be doing maybe a bit of time lapse or I'll show you when it's assembled one of my previous videos shows this step where we remove everything obviously I'm going to concentrate on the TPS cool I think let's carry on and uh, I'm fairly sure we'll get it done today still Right, the footage <coughs> might be a bit shaky. I want to actually show you where the oil pressure switch sleeps. There. Front intake, rear intake, from the top, right there. Oil pressure switch. Cool, let's carry on. Well, guys, um, Got one tank on, sort off on this side. I've closed up the intake system, fastened everything that I've loosened, removed the headlight fuse. Um, I'm going to be doing the TPS work now. I don't want the headlight to be burning the whole time. I'll show you now with the camera. I've actually drilled a small hole on this side, which actually corresponds exactly with the TBS side so I will be removing this again to 
be able to do the adjustment with everything on but here we go this is going to be the first start so let's see Ian you had a question you wanted to see it start so the tank is still dirty everything let's just get it up and uh, see that we don't run any error codes so far so good neutral and oil light so the main objective obviously is also the oil pressure sensor switch oil light needs to die let's give it a go and see Seems to be doing his job. Give it a restart again. Happy days so far. I think now I'll remove everything on this side and start setting up the laptop, uh, which I have at work. I'll use a tablet. And then we will carry on. Stay tuned. Right, we're back. All uh, right, um, laptop not here. So, use the phone. Tune easy use software. From Lone Lake. Spelling, spelled it right. It's a dongle which connects to your motorcycles, well, KTM specifically, or Triumphs, or quite a few, well, anyway. It connects to your ECU, I'll quickly show you here. That plug goes up, 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 into that box, and then it connects to your application. In order for this to work, now guys, this is important. A lot of people have done it, and I've tested it now and I'll quickly go a bit more in detail into in, in the video. Uh, the bike is hot currently. The aim for me for today is to actually draw a little hole in the airbox, very little hole, and I've made sure that it's really just just. So if you have a look in here, right at the bottom, somewhere there. Mm, can't really see there but your TPS throttle position sensor is loosened with this screwdriver and fastened and I've gained access through here through this inspection hole to actually adjust you see there it is to do the uh, throttle position sensor adjustments that chap there with a wiring. Okay. okay. So what you want to achieve is with the TuneCU software, the optimal setting for the 990 is 0.6 volt on your throttle position position sensor, and it shows it on this side as six percent. So I've achieved that. I'll see if I Switch the bike on. All right, fan is off. Okay, so it's not going to be noisy, which is nice. So this chap now will connect to the ECU. Video might video might be a minute or two or three longer, but uh, worth a while. Check it out. Come on. Establish connection. not going to start it now let's quickly disconnect and let's quickly reconnect it's coming up with KTM it's fine I 
All right. I'm going to zoom in here a bit. Um, the phone shows it clearly. All right, but anyway, there's a bit of a glare, but that is 6%, it's 79 degrees, and you have a bunch of additional features. You can have a look at your maps, download your maps, and do quite a bit more. Your pressures, oh, wait a minute, okay, no, 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 we need to adjust that. Temperature, TPS 6%, all right, okay, I'll have a quick look at that. Point Nine one. All right, I'm going to reset faults, and then I'm going to do a further adjustment and get rid of the point nine one and bring it down to point six zero. Cool. So that's loosening it and doing the adjustment on the inside. All right, I'll carry on with the video now. Let me just quickly do this adjustment. It's a bit noisy. And we'll chat now. Welcome back, everybody. Let's quickly carry on. We have. Check the error codes, clear the error codes, so you, you won't most probably be able to see a lot on the screen, um, unfortunately. So let's quickly have a look at diagnostics. Let's do test and adjustments. First, I'm going to run the tachometer, do a test on the tachometer. It's doing its test there in the front. Next test will be the fuel pump. Yeah, the bike is still stripped. Just running all the diagnostics. Okay, idle and speed control. I don't think I'll be able to run that because it's not idling. Test in progress. Oh no, it's actually testing it. It's done. Injector one. Let's test injector one. Injector two. Ignition coil 1, ignition coil 2, O2 sensor 1, give that a burn down test. Look, I'm not going to run through all these tests now, I'm still busy with the bike. No, well, they're not that many, but you can do extensive testing here. I'll just see how the footage displays on the camera. We'll work with on that, sorry. Um, okay, I'm first going to close that out. Error codes, reading codes, no error codes, I cleared the codes, I'm happy with that. And I think that, let's disconnect on the ECU. That concludes my test for tonight on the 990. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Um, we've done this video yesterday already, where we relocate the KTM 990R side stand to a bracket to actually get it off the engine casings. If you were to hit a rock at the bottom, usually uh, it's a design flaw it might crack your casings. So with the video already done, um, I've uploaded it and we had a bit of credence in the background playing so YouTube decided um, that it's a copyright infringement. So unfortunately it has been fitted already but I'll disassemble it 
and show you how it uh, all fits together. Right, so let's carry on with that. First is we're going to remove the gear lever. You can do it without it, but for video instructional purposes, I'm removing the gear lever so that you visually can see how it all ties up. Some special tools needed for this job. Um, I'll go through the whole list now. No? One thing that you do need is a good quality torque set screws. Um, that will fasten on the side stand. Normal Allen key doesn't work. So invest in a good set of those. But the rest is common. Allen keys. Um, and normal spanners that you have available in the garage or should have if you are as far as tackling this job okay, let me just take this off and you can see we usually buy this kit uh, locally it's a website called locomoto.co.za We don't have any affiliation with them But the nice thing is the, the parts are already made up This is the one long bolt that comes in the kit. We'll just loosen the bash plate a bit so that we can get the plate out behind it. So, this is your whole plate. It comes with a long bolt and separate um, holding bolts on this side where your side stand assembly then bolts on two. So this is the part that you purchase, the plate. So what it does, it takes the, you can see the two bolts where you stand usually is fastened on. It now fastens straight onto the plate on this side. So this frees up the side stand on the casings. Okay, let's just put it back again. Make sure to check there is wire, wiring as well at the back. you don't squeeze it in right so that's all that there is to it it's a plate your long bolt that goes back in the rear fasten the long bolt fasten the two on this side on the plate and one at the bottom Uh, just push the bolt back for me on that side, please. And then we'll put the other one in. The torque set that I was referring to on the original um, assembly, when you want to strip it down, is you will have of these Torx bolts on this side on your casing so you need to get in there on these bolts at the bottom but that is really the only place that you use them 
as I said, normal Allen keys don't fit. So get a set of tall screws. Alright, let's assemble this. The reversal order on the installation is that it's just removed it and the gear leader is just fastened again. Nothing much to it. Just this bolt is long. That's it. Um, in a nutshell, we do this bracket to recap quickly is to free up your side stand of your engine main case. The whole kit uh, can be purchased at locomotive.co.za. As I said, no site, uh, no affiliation to the site. Um, and it's about a 10 minute job if you have the right tools. If you have any questions, uh, put it down in the comments below and I'll contact you for any assistance needed. All right, Frank's Way channel then. Have a nice day, bye-bye. Welcome back, Frank's Way. We continue the video on our KTM 990. We'll be replacing the fuel pump filter. Tanks have been removed. <coughs> Other video shows how you remove the tanks. I think Let's start cracking and get it out and I think we're going to be surprised to see what it actually looks like. Right, I've removed the side cover at the bottom of the tank. It's a bit of an obstruction on this side. I think let's just put this away. Tools needed. Eight millimeter spanner. Your pump is located here. Obviously you've removed the tank or the wiring with it. And I think let's quickly take it off and have a look at what it looks like. It's recommended to be done. I do it every 50,000 kilometers. Um, intervals may differ, but at 60,000 kilometers, it should have been done already. Remember, guys, the bikes gulp a lot of petrol. So 30,000 is enough for me. It's not a big job, as I said. Take your time, do it over two or three days, whatever. If you have it, an additional bike that you can use, or car, do that. Okay, let's go stop it. Let's get some tools to remove it. Be back just now. All right, let's carry on. Just got myself a small screwdriver, flat, and very carefully, Remove the fuel pump and housing. Take some pictures when you remove it. A lot of people tend to, yeah, some petrol. A lot of people tend to mix up the two wires on the fuel pump. But I think from here on we'll start stripping it down quickly and we'll have a look. I'll move the tank away so that we have a bit more space. And uh, 
let's get cracking and let's get this fuel filter replaced cool right let's carry on these are not part of the package these are two main jets that I need to give them we'll be getting them tomorrow cool let's have a look at what we have here let's start this assembly Remember, take your time. There is really no, no rush in this job. I'm first going to do the wiring right for the next part you'll need two flat screwdrivers push it in on either sides I have already loosened it up slightly push it in and then I have used a long nose plier here pushing the two screwdrivers in and then pulled out the folder which is very dirty okay the thing had a few k's on it certainly be getting the Vaseline quickly and I'll show you guys what we do there no not what you're thinking right we're back got a dab of Vaseline earbuds that I always use and we'll be putting some Vaseline on the o-ring use rather more than less why am I not happy with this oil just have a look here Let's discard that. These are the same size. Second over.
any ordering that you remove, move it away separately, otherwise it will get mixed up and you're not sure what it is what. Don't skimp on the Vaseline. Let's take this one off first quickly here and let's add that. Take, take note on how you remove it. Small hole at the bottom. Again, add a dab of Vaseline. So that is done. Discard the old ring. Okay, we're done with that one for now. We have two smaller O-rings. It's actually not a big job doing this filter kit replacement. I know they're a bit expensive, but when you have it open, replace all of them, all the O-rings. The one thing that I see I haven't received in the quantum kit and I will be taking it up with him is the big o-ring for the bottom of the pump where it seats against the tank. Um, not sure why it's not included. But I'll have a chat with him. Would have liked to have seen it there. Again, dab of Vaseline. Put that on the side. We'll get to that just now. Take note, in the package is a very, very small, it's not even a sword clip. You will need that. Okay, let's carry on here. Let's remove this. I have pre loosened the two bolts already. They will be stuck. But as long as you take your time, as I said, no need to rush this. This is the part. Right, so this is the part. I'll use it for display purposes, but take some photos. When you remove it, that you are sure you get the right wire on the right side. There's really no harm in taking a few photos and uh, making sure everything gets assembled correctly again. Yes, it's missing. 
Right, let's carry on. I'll talk a bit during the video um, about the oil pressure sensor switch. I've ordered one from Domingo. I am going to be replacing one now, an aftermarket one that's more or less got the same pressure. But I'm going to get the correct part. It's just can't see myself driving to work and back with a car all the time. I hate it. But anyway, that's just me. Okay. So that is what we have on the inside. Looks like. Right, let's get this photo replaced, also very dirty. It's just better getting a new one. filter is a bit longer hmm. so I'm guessing this means this was the OEM one this is the aftermarket one from quantum Make sure you assemble it correctly, get it on tight. like yay well, this was the part where we need to ensure that this guy stays there make sure you install this rubber correctly wiring flat oh they did give me the kit right, anyway they did give me the kit uh, the o-ring at the bottom my mistake sorry didn't look at that one. But let's first quickly put this one over.
just get the torch quickly. I want to make sure that that is flush at the bottom. This is very important. Assembly is a reverse order of taking it apart. As I said, take photos. Never does any harm taking some photos. Just to make sure you've got it all lined up and properly fastened. Take your time, no need to hurry this. Why did I oversee this? I don't know. But you know what, there is something that I want to check. The one thing I did not ensure and remember mistake on my side this little clip that I told you about didn't put it in so it's on now and we are closing everything again These two wires can give it a run around. But you'll hear it slotting in. sure that it's actually in where it is supposed to be as I said it doesn't matter if you open it up again rather make sure it's installed correctly as doing the whole pump and then coming finding out that you haven't done it properly and you have to strip it down again so it's had a big job just a bit of care don't be in a hurry So that part is done. I did man, um, have a hassle loosening this small bolt. Gave me a bit of a hard time. This is the part where you have your camera ready with your photos that you've taken, so to ensure that you. fit the wiring on the correct place again. I'm just going to give it a bit of a tighten here with the pliers. Alright, so far so good. Done that so far. Let's quickly get this moving out.
And guys, don't use any silicone here. None whatsoever. But you're gonna definitely be using some um, Vaseline on this, so it goes in easy. Right, we're almost done. Right, let's carry on. We'll do Vaseline a little bit later on this bottom end. That is installed. Wiring is connected correctly. So let's carry on and stick this guy up. You'll, you'll see the wiring, the two wires go each side, one this side, one that side. So it slots in perfectly uh, to avoid get, having them make contact. Bit of a delicate process. Make sure you line everything up. Make sure these two clips clip in properly. Otherwise it's a new problem. That side is fine. This side is fine. The one O-ring I did not get is the one on the top here. So luckily for me, I have a full set of O-rings. It's always handy to have them around. Don't worry about the Vaseline, that will not cause you any issues, but it will make your life much easier installing the parts. Discard that old O-ring, and that's about it, we're almost done here. Very close to it. Wasn't such a big job after all. And when you're done, look over everything. Make sure your wiring connections are where they're supposed to be. Everything is tight. Have a look in the general area where you worked. This to me looks fine. This is an old filter. It's really bad. I suppose it's been in the bike for quite a while. Okay, I think at the moment this concludes our filter installation. And remember 990, 1090, 1190 and 1290. Take the same fuel filter kit. Some areas uh, sell the fuel pump with it and some just the um, normal filter kit. Have a look at fuelperformance.co.za 
that's fuel performance to zero zero. I have no affiliation with them. They gave me excellent service. Uh, responded well on emails. And I will certainly be using them for whatever else they offer. I've seen filters, but we'll have a look at what else they have. Cool, I'll get this guy back and uh, I'll quickly have a chat now about the oil pressure switch. But a little bit later on that one. Another job well done. The next part is really an important one. As I said, Vaseline. Use enough of it. Um, it's so easy just to pinch it. A little o ring at the bottom here. This is one of the most important steps is to make sure that you don't pinch the o ring and that it actually goes in as it should. not go in the first time but if you do it carefully you have no problems I'm taking it from the bottom first why? Course, then I know it goes in at the bottom and I can visually see the top what's going on and I trust it went in I guess with another with enough Vaseline you can get anything done so I guess uh, that is it on this video so far fuel filter replacement wasn't a big job but if, you, if you're not going to use Vaseline guys, it's certainly going to give you hassles. And uh, you'll find that out as soon as you have everything assembled. And you start the bike up. And notice that it's leaking fuel all over the place. Yes, I needed to move it, my mistake. But it's in, it's sorted. To be honest, first time I've changed the fuel filter kit on the 990. Um, I think I have it now for about 16,000 kilometers. I'll run about there. I'm not sure when the previous uh, KTM dealership changed it. But it's done now. Make another pin there with a different spanner. Tighten that up quickly. We'll just get the number 8. And that's it. Done. Fuel filter replacement, KTM 990, sorted. And the next video we'll be talking about the oil pressure switch. Cool. Chat later, bye bye, everybody. Right, welcome back, everybody. Let's quickly have a chat around the oil pressure sensor switch. Um, I've decided not to build the bike again prior me getting the, the KTM OEM oil pressure switch. Now, on the last video I talked about and said that I'm going to be replacing it. It's a mechanical unit, not too much to worry about. But delving deeper into the whole 
functionality of the oil pressure obviously is to let you know when there is no oil pressure. That, that's all good and well and fine. But the flip side to it is <clears throat> how much bar does it have to be? And there have been mixed answers on the forums. Some say it's 1.4 bar, 0.8, <clears throat> somebody said 0.3. Nobody was too sure. And I actually took mine off to try and find any indication of um, any writing on it. And there's none. So then I bought a few. I bought one <coughs> that's 0.9 bar, I bought one that's 0.35 bar, and the other one was 0.6 bar. So it's, it's a few, and I was really sitting and wondering, should I, should I not install? And eventually I got to the point where I decided, you know what, it's a 300 rand item. Um, Yes, I've spent maybe 40 Rand here and 100 Rand there for an, an, another switch. But I've ordered the KTM pot, and <clears throat> what also was a problem for me is I did not want to space up the switches. So the part number on this one is 600-3809-1100. OEM KTM part. And what puzzled me is the length. If you have a look at the length of them. So this side is the OEM unit, and this side is an aftermarket unit, and another aftermarket. You see, even there it differs in length. This OEM unit is much shorter. And eventually, <coughs> now when I open the box up of the KTM unit, it reads 0.35 bar so now I actually know exactly what it is it's 0.35 bar so the Golf unit Mark 1 Volkswagen Golf is 0.30 and I think even the old Volkswagen Beetle air cools are about 0.30 bar the length is the issue for me and if you screw it in there's not a lot of meat inside that you can screw it into so comparing the 300 gram part or 380, whatever it costs these days, um, versus the 50 grand rebuild on a motor, uh, it's it's easy maths. Um, just buy the part. So that's why it's still open. I have actually cleaned it a bit. But yeah, guys, 0.35 bar. Get the correct oil pressure switch. I know KTM had a bit of issues on the previous uh, units. Ah, I'm going to start installing the switch quickly, and tonight I'll most probably start building the um, airbox and um, everything else. And then we'll do the throttle position sensor alignment before I close up and button up everything. So yes, that is a bit of feedback around the oil pressure switch. I'll put the detail below in the link where we bought it. Uh, Domingo, thank you very much, helped us out greatly on that one. Um, always helpful. I'll put their links on the detail. If you need any advice from them, give them a call. Domingo is on the ball. He'll supply you whatever you need. That's KTM Centurion. Right. I think for now, I'm going to have a quick break. Install this chap. And then do the rest of the installation and uh, carry on with the video. And tell you a bit more about the TPS installation and then we'll test the fuel pump Eon. Um, I'll show you when we start it up. Cool. A little bit later, enjoy the video, subscribe, enjoy. Cheers everybody.